Okay, hey guys, Ryan here. Welcome to the third video in this little series covering the basics of perspective. In the last one, we looked at two-point perspective. At the end of that video, I suggested a scenario where we were looking up at a tall building in front of us from street level. Okay, and what you'd notice is that the top of this building appears narrower than the base of it in front of you because it's obviously further away. The other thing you'd notice is that our vertical lines now have direction. They seem to lean inwards. And if we were to follow those lines up into the sky, they gradually converge at a third vanishing point. And so we get into three-point perspective. So I'm going to draw this out more neatly down here. The same scenario, we have our horizon line and the base of the building or our tall box is in front of us below the horizon. But now what's different with three-point perspective, in two point we started with an edge, right? In one point we started with the entire face. But because our vertical lines now have direction, we're going to start at a corner which is going to be nearest to us. In this case, it's going to be the front bottom corner, okay, this over here. Then we're going to have a vanishing point up here in the sky. Okay, we'll place two vanishing points on our horizon line. And just like before, we're going to connect this corner of our building to our vanishing points, all three of them. Bring that one up in the sky. And we're going to say that our building ends over here and over here. These lines are vertical and therefore would go off to our third vanishing point. We can say that our building ends over there. This corner we draw a line all the way through to the vanishing points on our horizon line. And let's just do the same so that we can see through the building from these points here and these points over here. You'll also notice if I run a point through that top corner, it intersects at the back over here. So now we've got our building in three-point perspective. Okay, and because it crosses the horizon line like this, we can't see any other faces. We can't see anything on the underside, of course, and we can't see the top either because it's way up above us. But what if we want to set things up in the same way that we did with these illustrations where they're set a bit below the horizon line, we're looking down at them. Okay, so our horizon line then is going to be higher. And our vanishing point is going to be below the horizon line this time. So let's say that our vanishing points are here and here on the horizon line. And we start with the front top corner of our tall box. And as with previous cases, we connect that with all of our vanishing points, including this vertical line down to the vanishing point at the bottom. You can say that one end is over here and the other end is over here. So we'll draw a line to our vanishing points again all three of them and let's say this ends right about here draw that line through to our vanishing point and I'm going to do the same with these bottom corners because these will help when it comes time to cast the shadow so now we've got the construction lines for our box in three-point perspective I'm going to drop the opacity of this and then I want to make it look like this box is sitting on a flat plane, like a piece of paper, where the edges run parallel to the edges of my box. So I'm going to start the vanishing point. Like so. And do the same on this end. Okay, 
I'm going to drop the opacity of that and then mark it out on a separate layer, just the outline using shift to create my straight lines. And then I'm going to fill that with white and shift it below my box. I'm going to do the same for the box, outlining that, making sure that I close all of my lines because we're going to be using the fill tool, the paint bucket tool. If we have any gaps between our lines, we're going to accidentally fill parts of the canvas that we don't want to. Okay, so there's our box. Now to give this a bit more volume, I'm going to add a light source and cast a shadow on it. So let's say we have a light source quite high up over here. The first thing we're going to do is drop a straight line down to the floor. Let's say around here. I want to cast my shadow out a little bit to the right. Now this is going to be the vanishing point for my shadows. I'm going to draw a line from here through the bottom corners of my box, making the lines quite long. And lastly, this one here. Now we're going to do the same thing, but from the light source itself and run those lines through the top corners of our box. Now this one isn't really going to work for this corner here, so I'm going to move through to the next corner. And you're looking for the point where these lines intersect. So about there. And then this last one intersects there. Cool, so now we've got the points or the corners of our shadow. Okay, now I'm going to connect these intersections for the shadow with each other. Okay, and then I'm going to fill that in with a dark gray, like so. So now we've got our shadow for the box, but I want this to be a closed box. So we're not going to see this shadow over here. So I'm going to go to my box layer and fill in those planes. This side is turned away from the light source, so it is going to be quite dark. Fill in like so. Obviously the top is getting the most light from the light source and the side is not quite going to be as dark as this and it's certainly not going to be as light as the top side of it. Find something sort of in the middle. And there we've got our box in three-point perspective with a light source casting a shadow. And that about covers it for the basics of drawing boxes in perspective. I really recommend that you fill sketchbook pages doing a bunch of boxes like this all using the same vanishing points just to develop your understanding of these shapes in space. And it's not just about drawing boxes accurately, it's about understanding space. And you can use these boxes as guides for placing objects in a scene. So doing this you're going to develop your understanding of space and you'll be able to create more believable depth in your illustrations. So I hope you found this interesting and useful. If you missed the first two videos, you can find those here on the right. And if you have any questions, drop a comment below. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again soon for another video.